Hello, welcome to the ninth episode of Coding with Amadeus. Today, we're going to read strings from files. Sounds easy, hey? Well, we're working with universal Windows apps which are sandboxed and don't enjoy the same liberties as we know from the traditional .NET apps. Even access to the resources is different. The motivation behind this episode is that in a previous episode, I made a rookie mistake. I shared my secret API token with you, did it on camera, and checked it into a public GitHub repo. To protect this data from now on, we will store it in an external file. First, I'll show you how to exclude this file from source control, and then we'll look at ways to read its contents from Universal Windows app. We'll read data from resource file and from a custom configuration file. So let's get started by creating the resource file that will ultimately store this API token. We'll right click on the project, hit add, new item, and under Visual C Sharp, we'll scroll down to go to resources. And maybe we'll call it private configuration. Uh, so this is the file which will store uh, our secret strings, uh, the tokens to the weather service, to the transit service, and everything which is needed by the app, but I don't want to share with the outside world. Let's save it now, and we'll add it to the repository. We'll create a new branch, for example, privates, and we're checking in this file so that when you download the repository, you will not get the file not found exception. You will get an empty file and all the changes that I will make will remain local. There are two common patterns to tackle this issue. Uh, one of them is to locally ignore tracking changes of a file. Uh, this is best used for small projects just like mine. Uh, for bigger projects, you might need to use uh, a filter driver um, is a more complex project. Uh, I will link the Stack Overflow answer uh, below, so you can take a look at it. But uh, we will use just this command with a git update index. So we'll go to our GitHub, uh, open the git shell. We are on our private branch, and now let's uh, type it in. All right, so we'll update index, assume unchanged with a private configuration res w. Um, keep in mind that this change is only local. So if uh, another developer gets that file and starts modifying it, uh, they'll be able to actually check in changes unless they use the same line right here. So let's double check if, if this actually works. So currently in GitHub, we checked in an empty file uh, let's go to Visual Studio and try to actually maybe just type in this API in here. So we'll call this uh, W Underground API. Here it is. Okay, we saved it. Now let's go to GitHub. Great. Now let's see how we can access this data from within the Universal Windows app. I just wrote a blog post about using custom resource files on Universal Windows platform, so you can refer to this blog post for uh, all the code samples. And here I showed how to protect the API token, you can get the git command from here. And two ways to read the resources, using uh, a file and using resources. Uh, first, I'll demonstrate the resources. And this solution is actually very simple, it's just a two-liner. So we'll quickly demonstrate it here uh, in our get weather data method. Uh, since our resource file is called private configuration dot resw, uh, we'll use a new Windows application model resources resource loader with param private configuration without the dot resw. So uh, those are our resources. And now we will get the token. The key is uh, w underground dash API. And we'll call this uh, API token. Now we'll use the C sharp 6 string concatenation. So we can just 
put API token in curly braces right here and here. Uh, so let's get back to this uh, green squiggle line saying that the resource loader is obsolete. Well, let's see if it works. Uh, it looks like we're getting the data. Um, it's cloudy. Yeah, that looks about right. All right, so uh, the pros and cons of using resources. Um, the big pros of using resources is localization. Uh, you can easily create resources for various languages and uh, the Windows runtime will pick whichever resource is the most appropriate for the user. And this comes with a bunch of awesome automation. For example, if user changes the language while your app is running, you don't need to do anything. Windows will just update the resources. So that's a cool perk. But will I ever use it? No. Um, another perk is uh, for image resources, that's something that we could actually use. Uh, you can provide big images for high resolution um, devices, you can provide small images, you can create uh, images with high contrast or uh, regular colors. So here Windows is taking a very GUI centric point of view where the resources just provide strings to be put on the screen for localization. And as we're reading this uh, warning message, uh, use get for current view. I don't want to tie my API key to a view. What we need to do here is load up a file with all our configuration. I think that this will give us a lot of flexibility. So how about we, we do that instead? So I will scrub the resource and we'll uh, add a JSON file. I'll see you in a bit. Method of using files is not that much more difficult. Uh, instead of using the two-liner from here, We'll just scroll up and and read the file this way using this convenient three-liner. So uh, we'll put the code in here. All right, let's see if it works. Perfect. It looks like we have the token. and we can access the weather information. Great, so now that this works, uh, let me just quickly walk you through uh, how we're reading those files. Uh, there are two ways to access a file. Uh, first is uh, using the URI. We're creating URI that starts with the msapx protocol, it looks like. And msapx protocol um, refers to the location of the executable. And because we have this sample.txt with built action content, it means that this file will be included uh, wherever the assembly of this uh, program is. And another way to get the file is to use the folders. Uh, so instead of using the URI, we'll get the file uh, just using the file name inside the package folder. So let's uh, quickly debug this and uh, I'll show you more about the package folder. Shows that uh, here are all the assemblies used by your application and among them is the sample file. As I said earlier, universal Windows apps have limited access to the file system, uh, but you might be interested in looking at uh, the person's library or application data. For, for example, when you need to store downloaded files. Um, because keep in mind that the installed location is read-only. You cannot modify uh, your assembly. So if you want to store information, you will need to use the app data. So for that, we'll use Windows Storage Application Data Current and here we have local folder, local settings, roaming folder, temporary folder. So uh, let's take a look at those too. Uh, this is where, where all your packages live. And let's quickly break down what's happening here. We have um, temp state. 
Uh, it looks like it's a folder that gets cleaned whenever you close the app. Roaming state, that's information which persists between um, different devices of single user. And app data, I think, is um, the location where you can download stuff from the internet for the user. So this is the writable location for you. But for us, we want to just read the API token, which is stored in installed location. So we'll use that. And I'll just quickly refactor the code so that um, we're not accessing it here in get weather data every five minutes. We should read these API tokens once and then just uh, consume them from our models. Remember how we created a timer controller or navigation controller? Um, we'll create um, settings controller for lack of better name. Uh, we'll add a method load settings. Okay, uh, here we go. Settings controller as it loads uh, the settings.json file, which is uh, right here. Uh, make sure to set the build action to content. Uh, initially, it was known and it didn't work. We're using uh, newtonsoft.json, uh, json convert.deserialize object, uh, and that creates a dynamic object. And uh, now, how do we use it? Um, we just hit dot and access each of the names from the JSON as if it was uh, a property in C sharp. So let's uh, let's take an example here. Now in the immediate window we can type settings dot sample dot to string and returns text as we see right here. Uh, we are interested in an um, API token, so we'll ask for settings.w underground API. Uh, if we would like to take a look at property of the object here, we just say object.property, and here we have value. And it also supports uh, arrays. I guess in this case we cannot do two string, but we can do, for example, second item dot item dot two string, and this returns uh, value three. Uh, so the dynamic object is really interesting. Uh, with just four lines of code, we have access to, actually with five lines of code, four lines here, and one line here, uh, we have access to every single property in our settings. So uh, let's continue. And now we are here, settings controller dot settings, and we are accessing the property W underground API, F10. And here it is, our API token. Actually, let's just see what happens when we're trying to retrieve a setting that is not there. Blah. We get a null. Okay, so at least we're not getting an exception. Um, and I guess it's time to test if it works. And here's our weather, it works, okay. I guess we learned that uh, for the greatest flexibility, it's the best to create your own setting store. And actually it's not that bad to manage your own settings uh, these days in .NET because, uh, because we have this awesome dynamic type. Uh, so now, what we need to do is add the settings of JSON to source control and make it such that it's no longer tracked. So I will remove this. I'll cut this out and now I'll save everything. Oh, just for the sake of completeness. Uh, when we launch the app, I initialize the settings just after setting up the navigation controller. So kind of in the beginning where, where everything is being set up. That, I don't know what this is. 
we can get rid of this. We are adding an empty settings.json. We no longer need a private configuration. Now Git is no longer tracking the settings.json. And I can restore the API key that we were using here earlier. Save everything, test if it works. Go back to GitHub and observe that Git is not aware of this change. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the transit controller. I actually wrote most of it. Uh, now it's just a matter of uh, shooting the episode. So I'll see you really soon.